Good evening, everybody out there in Chester County and on my Facebook page, coming to you straight live from City Town Talk on a super special Sunday as none other than Brother Fonz. And man, do, do we have a surprise for y'all this evening. We got the dynamic duo. We got the twins, the Droop brothers, and I'm thoroughly excited. So y'all know how I do when I get excited. I get a little tongue tied every now and then. But look, I want y'all, my viewers out there to be just a little patient because y'all know what you got to do. I want y'all to share this video and tag me on it so like we can have that boomerang effect and we can get it back here. So in case we got any questions or comments, it will come straight up on my phone and my iPad. So y'all just, y'all just give me a second. My regular viewers, y'all know how I do. Uh, <laughs> it always, I always got to take a second to do this. So who of my viewers out there, okay, we're already on. Therese Allen, you are already on. I appreciate y'all for sharing this. Now we can rock and roll. I'm going to share one, one more thing because you can never have enough stuff to share stuff. What do you think? What do you think? Take Bam. your time. Take your time. Take your time. All right, look, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if I had a drum, I'd do a drum roll. But since I don't have one, I'm going to ask each one of these gentlemen just to introduce themselves and tell you a little about, now wait a minute. Yeah. We're going to have them introduce themselves and tell uh, my viewers a little bit about themselves before we get into our Q and A. Who's going to be first? Come on, Phil. What's nah, going nah, on, man? This off. Uh, man, I'm Philip Hicklin, uh, co-founder and president of Droop uh, out of Coastville. Uh, tonight, we're we, we not going to let, we're we, we not letting our foot off the gas tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of information, a lot of excitement. This will not be your average interview. The Droop Brothers is on tonight. Hey, Dom, take it over, baby. <laughs> hey, what's going on? My name is Dominic Hicklin, CEO and co-founder of Droop. Hey, listen, Fonz, wait what? real quick. Um, Let me say this to you, man, before you even get into anything. I admire you, my brother, as a king. Um, I remember when we was kids, and you was one of the first entrepreneurs that we met in real life, in real time, when we was kids. You was mm. one of the first black establishments that we ever walked into. So I want to salute you for uh, leading the way for young brothers like myself. Salute to you. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Don't y'all owe me a couple of dollars for some Jordans y'all got back in the year? Uh... <laughs> no, no, maybe not. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Boy, but y'all y'all was, was some of the best. And you know what? What was better than y'all being excellent customers and stuff like that? You were respectful gentlemen. You right. know what I mean? And, right. I, and I give that to all of Coastville. I've only been disrespected once, and we straightened that out with, with a person. And uh, yeah, Coastville has been very, very, very good to me. Man, look, I am so excited. I almost don't know where to start. Maybe I'm, I almost want to freestyle. Now, which one of y'all played basketball? We both listen, did. Listen. We both did. We both, come on, Fonz. Come on, Fonz. <laughs> Coastville history. <laughs> we both got it in. Um. That was one of our first passions, um, basketball. We, we lived by it, we died by it, we slept by it, we woke up to it. But Fonz, I'm gonna tell you this, it wasn't basketball that, it was, it was the transition in becoming a man. You know what I'm saying? We learned discipline, how to be a, a better teammate, how to be a leader. So basketball was just more than shooting hoops. You know what I mean? Laying the ball on the backboard. It was really about, you know, dignity, honesty, respecting your teammate and saying, hey, look, we. We right here. We right next to each other. So it was bigger than basketball. It was definitely like bigger that. than basketball. Phil, you want to add something to that? I want to add something. Fonz, you just said which basketball, which one of y'all played basketball? Fonz, come on, man. Come on, y'all twins, man. You couldn't tell whether y'all was passing the to each other. Twins played basketball. Fonz, the twins played <laughs> no, no, basketball. But, uh, we, we, we had fun. We had we had a good time in Coastville. My ninth and 10th grade year, uh, we spent some time in Coastville when Ricky Hicks was the coach at the time. And uh, we ended up transferring to Downingtown. Um, we, we, we spent the, our last two years in um, Downingtown West, uh, our 11th, 12th grade year. We had a heck of a season. We had a, we had a, we had a phenomenal team. We did good. Uh, you know, a lot of scholarships was on the table for us. I mean, we didn't capitalize on none of them. But, uh, you know, we're here today. I mean, you know, we're changing the narrative on, uh, on where we, where we, where we want to be in our life. So, I mean, you both, but basketball played a huge role uh, in our life, for sure. Okay, now, right now, we're going to acknowledge some of our viewers, man, because we always want to take time to do that. So, Iris Holmes, Dion Brown, Hogar, and six others are watching. Of course, okay. oh, 
Ira said, good evening, Droop Kings. Oh, man. That's a t-shirt right salute, there. Salute, salute, salute. <laughs> Cass Rowland, my main man from Big Boy's Barbecue Sauce, says, hey, what's up? Adrian Roberts, we was just talking out there on yes, East my yesterday. My and uh, Dennis Brown, Chester Avenue, he yes, said, sir. hey, what's up? Now, look, before I get into my Q&A, I got one more freelance question. Now, Let's I do remember it. when y'all was in high school and everything. But uh, bro, like a couple of years went by and when I next time I saw you, both of y'all was real swole. Okay. So now, now what how what what happened? And and I see you ain't swole no more like you were swole. So talk let to me, us about how you're doing what you're doing. Let me tell you that, uh Fonz, you know what, man? Can I be honest, man? You know, Always. having so much weight, having so much weight on, you know, after I got done playing basketball, Fonz, I went through a uh when I left college, I went through a depression because basketball was my life. I knew nothing else but basketball. I felt like I went to school for basketball. Uh, it was so it was so much part of our life that uh, when when uh, when we when I dropped out of college, it, I went through a depression and I just start eating and eating and eating. It was just nonstop eating, man. And uh, one day, this guy, man, sixty five year old, he was my manager at this warehouse job I was at, and um, he was like, man, you got to be around. 55 years old because of my weight. He said, you, you know, your beer, you got the, you got the whole beer belly going on. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, from that day on, Fonz, I started hitting that trail up and uh, got some of them love handles off. And, All right. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, but and just, just stand in shape, man. Stand, stand in shape and, and, you know, health is wealth. You know how I go, Fonz? Yeah, 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 man. Hey, look, man, I'm sitting over here grinning and giggling because you know what, uh, a good, good spirit does that to, to me. You know what I mean? Mm. It to me is mm. more than, than 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 silver and gold, man. When I'm around somebody who's upbeat, it's got a good spirit, man. It makes my day. Now let, let let's uh let's acknowledge a couple other people. Jake Royal seems to be very very impressed with y'all because he said two good brothers here, and I don't know Jeffrey Washington's on here. He's a he's a cowboy fan, but I'm gonna go ahead and say hi to him, Jeffrey. You need, <laughs> you need to get another team. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Go, Washington, he just checked in, man. They are checking in. Word on the street is I got the dynamic duo on City Town Talk tonight. Okay, now, let's get into some real questions because y'all played too much. Okay, you already told the viewers about yourself. Now, let me ask you a question. In school, now, I want both of y'all to answer this. What did y'all aspire to do? And and did you uh, did you really have a, uh, a feeling for entrepreneurship back when y'all was in school? Let me answer that. Uh... And our inspiration growing up, no lie, Every, like he, my, my brother said, it was basketball. Everything was around basketball. We lived it. We slipped, you know, we woke up to it. That's what we, that's what we did. That's what we wanted to do our whole life. Uh, one of our biggest inspirations was going to the NBA. We was inspired by guys like Allen Iverson. That was our generation. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Fonz, let me be all honest with you, man. I was in school and it, it, I regret a lot of things like not, opening up the books like I should, not reading things that I should have been, you know what I mean? Like, sure. and they say, if you want to hide something from our culture, put it in a book. And we was guilty of one of those kids that be, you know what, we got basketball, we fine. You know, we don't got, we don't got to be, you know, we don't got to be that intelligent. And as an adult and as a man, I'm looking back like, wow. But it made me who I am today. But growing up in school, man, we wanted to be NBA stars. We wanted to be college stars. That's what we wanted to do. That's what we grew up in. You know, that's what we saw outside. When we walk outside and when you saw Richard Hamilton, the guy with the big car and the nice jewelry, it was Richard Hamilton. We didn't have no other, you know, uh, another light outside that was like, okay, he did this. It was one play. It was one guy. That was Richard Hamilton. So we all inspired to, you know, be basketball players at the time in our high school days. So that's where we was at with it. Yeah. Let me try, let me let, let me piggyback off of what he just said because Dominic spoke about the basketball aspect of things and uh we done mo we done multiple things as kids growing up uh we started a record label at a young age uh committed committee at a young age and at that time when we were around 14 and 15 years old we were signing artists without no money making rec we was a we had an A&R ear and we were selling clothes and we used to come up, my friends used to laugh at me all the time because I used to come up with imaginations for album covers. And I always had a neck for creativity. And, you know, it's funny how we, we, we where we at today and where we led because it all has to do with creativity. But we sold, uh, we sold uh, CDs, we sold uh, 
We sold clothes. We used to go to, man, so many things we done. Let me chime in. Can I chime in? Can I chime in? Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. We had this clothing line called Monkey doo Everybody in, our, in, in Coastville in our generation know what Monkey doo was. We used to literally go buy logos of monkeys and literally put them on T-shirts. And we would sell them to every culture that was out there. And we made we made hundreds of dollars. We made a move. And, you know, we sold CDs and things like that in our in, but I think Phil said something that was very important. And I, I need y'all to catch this in the audience. We used to sign people to our record label as kids. So it was pretty much kids signing kids. Saying, hey, look, if you sign with us, you know, we can help you out and build your career up and help you. We had that mindset at 12, 11, 13 years old. So to be men now and look back at that, we're like, wow, we, we was for this position that we're in today. So, uh, Phil, I'm glad you touched on that, but Monkey doo was our clothing line about 12, 13 years old. Adrian Roberts, stand up. He know all about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on here now. He's talking about all facts. But check this out. So then, in other words, Droop is actually a, na- a, a natural trans- transition from oh, where y'all came from. And see, that part I didn't know about y'all, but we're going to get into that a little bit further. We're going to break that on, break that on down. Okay, yes, Adrian said that's all facts. Shirley A. Williams checked in. Ramsey Coulter, in case you ever need your need your credit repaired, we got Ramsey out there. Okay. <laughs> and we got Cheek Legree. Oh, that's a Legree. Okay, oh, they just God. they just checked in. Okay, let, let, let me keep going. This is this is getting nice. I like how y'all flowing. Because see, some people I get on here, I gotta be like a dentist. It's like I gotta get the pliers, I gotta pull their teeth out, I gotta pull the sentence out. They not today, not today, not today, not today, not today. Not today. All right, not today. okay, all right. Now, what type of jobs did y'all work before you? And now, wait a minute, is Droop your only only job, or you have a you have a regular another job, and Droop is like uh, an extension, or how's that working? Okay, go okay right. Go ahead, Dom. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's where wine is. That's where wine is a little bit. My first job was, uh, I can't, I went to a uh, division one school called Norfolk State uh, University in Virginia. Um, that's where I got my scholarship for basketball, division one school. I came back home, I left and let, fine. So let me, let me kind of take this back a little farther. So when we graduated high school, um, my brother decided, you know what, let me just, you know, let me chill on the basketball thing. Let me, I don't want to do it no more, right? And you got to understand, we're twins. We did everything together our whole entire life. So my love for basketball wasn't just, it was a connection with my twin brother that was right next to me every day. So yes, my brother, so my brother stopped playing basketball. I went to Norfolk. I was out there by myself. Um, it was cold out there. You know what I mean? I had a matter of fact, shout out to Daquan Grove. He was out there in Virginia state. Uh, he was out there for a little bit with me, but I came back home. I quit basketball. Fine. This is no joke. This is no lie. I quit basketball. And I always thought about, I'm just, I'm giving I'm giving you a replay. So I quit basketball. I'm like, as I'm older, I'm like, how did I quit? Why did I, I should have just stayed in. I should have stuck out. I come to realize as a man, as an adult that, the love I had for the game was a part of my brother. So when my brother left it, I left it. I came back home. Um, I was depressed. I was like, damn, I don't know what I should do now. What should I do? Um, I got my first job. I had my first child, Isaiah, Dominic Isaiah Hickman. I had my first child. Um, I got a job. I was living back home. Me and my brother, we was living at home at this time. Uh, my first job was at the Acme. I was pushing carts. And let me say this, Fonz. Let me say this, like. Resilient, listen, resilience, resilience, resilience. You know how much it took for me to go outside and go push carts, knowing I was the man my whole entire life. Nah. You hear what I'm talking? Fine. Do you hear what I'm saying? Fine. Listen to me. I was the man our whole entire life, right? Praise. You guys are good in basketball to pushing carts with a hoodie on out there in the wintertime. So I always had that appreciation. Like, wow, next time I get an opportunity in life, I'm going to take this thing. You know, I went from job to job. I went from job to job. Matter of fact, let me let my brother chime in on uh on, on the jobs to ignite. You want to chime in? Yeah, we all you know before we was working, I was working at QVC at a warehouse, uh picking and packing. Uh it was a grimy job. I used to pick a thousand pieces of jewelry a day. And uh we came across an entrepreneur named Quincy Jones. Uh 
he showed us the way he showed us, you know, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, just didn't understand how I would get there. And if it wasn't rap or basketball or things out on the streets, I, I just was like, well, how could we be able to maneuver our way out the out of Coastville, out of the hood? And, uh, you know, I met him and it, extreme, the, the company, the network market company that we've done, it changed my life. I got free education to be an entrepreneur and we retired from corporate America from that. And things went south with that. The business went, you know, did some other things. And uh, and my brother one day came to me and said, man, listen, it's time to, you know, start our own thing. It's time to not just be an independent contractor, but it's time to own it, to control it. And, uh, you know, as Drew, Drew, as an ideal, we got, a, we got our first angel investor. We invested a six-figure check into us, uh, our company that we're proud about. Um, we use that as uh, two, just things, tools to, to build up our features and updates and things like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, it's been a journey, man. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me let me chime in, Franz. I know you got to do your job, but it, this is not the time of day. We got we. I got this. So listen, <laughs> listen. So Franz, you gotta understand this. Um, while we was in uh the company, the multi level marketing company, we was uh you know retired from a job. We did all you know all these great things, and a uh, uh, part of that was our ambition was super high and realizing what it was like in the corporate world, corporate America. So we was building our company, but as we was building, we was motivational speaking. My brother mm -hmm. was doing an amazing job at motivational speaking. Uh, I felt like I was doing it at the time. I was more so as I can conversate better. You know what I mean? I felt like I could, I could, but my brother, when it came to that motivational thing, he was Michael Jordan with the fadeaway. And it was, I love when he talked. And my brother called me and said, yo, I'm about to um, put this video on. Mind you, I'm rewinding it back a little bit. He said, I'm about to put this video on YouTube. And I said, nah, this ain't, this is not what we doing no more. I said, it's time to own our own platform. He said, what you mean? I said, listen, well, instead of you putting your video on YouTube, fighting for a creative space, hmm. let's create a platform where they got to come to us. My brother said, what you talking about? You always, you, what's it like? There's always something popping up in your, I said, listen, it's time to own a platform. And the ideal droop came up and uh, ever since we've been running full speed ahead. Fonz, you gotta talk to me. What's up, what's next? Come on. Hey man, but look, look first of all, I got some people that, that, that really appreciate y'all being on. So let's acknowledge them and let them know how important they are. We got, oh, uh, Delina, Delina DeVoe said, so proud of my little brothers, do your thing. Yes, sir, uh, yes, sir, shout out to her. Shout out to Delana. Delana, yeah. listen, listen, Fonz, let me bring you in. I, I recruited Delana in my network market organization. Delana was making six figures at the VA. You hear me, Fonz? I, 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 I was talking to her over the phone. I called her up and she thought I was, a, she said, you have to be a 30 year old white man. I started crying. I said, I'm 23 years old. And, uh, <laughs> you know, she taught me so much about, about careers and dedication. She had her own home and she used to just do whatever she wanted. I'm like, dang, she living a life. And at that time, I was making, I wasn't even making a thousand dollars a month. And she and I'm recruiting her out of my business. So, you know, Delana, shout out to Delana. Delana played a huge role in our, our multi-level marketing business. Uh, you know, and, and that's when my life started to change a lot when I start coming across uh more people, more like-minded individuals. I got away from people that were stuck and I got, cause sometimes find, find you could be a big 10 on level one. And you know, and all about, and, and, and one thing about leadership, you always got to keep growing. You know, 11 is number two on the second level. Number right. 21, 21 is number number one on the third level. So I had to get around some big fives and some some early sixes. And I got to mm -hmm. get, I had to get away from the big 10s mm. on level one. So being around people like Del Delana DeVoe changed my life. Coastville, stand up. Y'all played a huge role in Drew. Believe that. Hey, Fonz, 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 Fonz. Oh, um, wait a minute. Before I, you go, Fonz, before Fonz, you go. Fonz, no, 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 no. Fonz. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Fonz, Fonz. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Fonz, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Get it. You asked me to get on. I'm on here now. Hey, so listen, can I please give a shout out to my brothers? Yeah. Asmar Rokins. All right. Asmar oh, Rokins. Yeah. Adrian Roberts, the third yeah, huh? twin. Adrian Roberts. Yes, sir. Francis Warston. Yes, sir. Jesse Zeller. Yes, sir. Victor yes, sir. Ford, Jr. Yes, sir. Francis Green, Francis Washington. Yes, sir. If I miss you, I promise I love you. I love you. Jerron Wilson. Jerron Wilson. Wilson. Shout out to 
So so check this out. I want before I lose my thought. You mentioning Delena. Delena is in our nonprofit Movement Community mm. Development Corporation. Uh, sure. Excellent addition to our group administratively, uh, as far as ideas, the way she approaches uh, every job that she does for us, she she approaches it to uh, have excellence, to exceed, to do mm. more than what is she's even called for. She is a total blessing and we are moving together forward and things that we're trying to do for our community. And we're trying to do some big mm. things. And you know, big things take a minute. And I know a lot of people that sit around waiting for us to do stuff instead of mm. them doing stuff that we ain't moving fast enough on, but we're moving in God's time. And when you do mm. big things, you're gonna have big obstacles, but the reward is great and I love it. But look, here, we gotta, we gotta acknowledge some people. Delena, that's enough. I don't want your head to get too big. T Myers checked in. Yeah. Go Listen, ahead. Here, here goes somebody. Akeisha Ellison. Oh man, they coming in, man. That's what I'm saying. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Check this one out. Daryl Peterson from, from Maine. He in Boston somewhere. Oh. Shout out to Daryl. Shout out to Daryl. Okay, Linda Pinkney. Marie Boyd is checking in. Marie, I'm glad you have become a real regular and we appreciate you so much. We got Adrian yep. on here. Delina said, golly proud of y'all, man. Adrian, he just, Adrian Roberts just gave up three or four fists. He's just like, like the black power thing. Brandy Jennings, Darren Rochester. <laughs> Dar Darren, he about big as, big as an ink pen now, ain't he? He looking good. All right, <laughs> and he said, what's up, fellas? It's cheesy. Now let's get back to some questions and some questions. I love what y'all doing though. I like the yeah. freestyle. Now, now look, you said you got something uh, a motivational speech or something that you've recorded? Is that what I heard you say? You know, you was doing it on YouTube or something. Now you're doing it on your own platform. What am I hearing? Yeah, uh, at the time I was doing inspirational speaking because I wanted to, I wanted to motivate people that that didn't see the things that I seen. Uh, and I did a lot of that at the end of the presentations. After I got done, I I, I end up closing it. So my brother, I I. I I was going to start a career of doing it because I, I people were wanting to pick, like I was getting paid to, to speak at events, but my brother was like, "Hey man, listen, you don't don't put it on no platform. It's time to make our own." So I mean, it wasn't that that was a, a part of the reason why we created Droop was to build our, to, to not just get recognized on other people's platforms, but to create our own because we felt like we were those guys. We felt like we was hot. We felt like we was we're hot enough to create our own thing, and people will flock to it. And we built a a special platform for local businesses, and they're thriving like never before. So I'm not doing inspirational speaking anymore, but I don't mind talking to the kids for free and to people. But um, I'm not doing it. But it was a part of the reason why we created the the app Drew. Mm. Well, I, I think I think it's important for you to do that because people in our community need to hear more from people such as yourselves, which is why you're on this show tonight. It right. wasn't so much for, 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 for me to help you sell Droop. It was more so showing those who are my viewers right. what can be done, mm. what, what people can go through, go over, be it obstacles, challenges, bad histories, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you, and because of who you were, doesn't dictate who you can be. Mm. Mm. You smell Fonz. cooking, Fonz. I, I smell, Fonz. I smell what you cooking, and I want to be very clear. Of this, it's not over. We haven't hit the peak. We're seceding, but we're nowhere where we need to be, and nowhere near, not even close. But mm. just to show you where we came from is is pivotal to us because we 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 started off. I mean, we was Fonz. We we completely lost ourselves out of high school, uh, completely. But I just want to be very clear that we're not even close. This is just the peak, man. This is, I mean, it's going to be so much more coming from us all in, in, in the near future. But uh, we're having fun with it, Fines. Talk to me. Man, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm going to be following y'all because when you, when you send it out, I'm going to send it out to the community, man. I, I can't keep a secret. <laughs> so if y'all right. doing some stuff, right. I'm telling right. everybody. I can't hold water. I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. <laughs> all right. Now, yeah. now I'm gonna really be following y'all because I see how y'all is, and I like that. I like that. 
So you already told me whose idea it was, but now, so, and you told me what led you to create your own platform because you got tired of piggybacking off of somebody else. So if you want to have your hey, own Hey, fine, fine. Let me say this. Yeah. My brother came up with the idea that we needed to create our own platform. We didn't know what that platform was going to mm. be. We, 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 we understood that there was a problem because businesses wasn't getting recognized. But listen, Fonz, let me be very, uh, business wasn't getting recognized, but man, I want to, uh, go ahead, Fonz. Say it. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I'm like, well, we're posting on Facebook and they get paid eight bucks a, a post. My brother seen like, a, like, yo, we, we, we. Fonz, I, 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 I'm going to take up too much of the time, man. No, but hey, come on, man. Nobody playing with hey, you, man. Look. Got, hey, 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 Fonz, you, hey, Fonz, you, you got more questions. Kid. I'm ready. What we doing? That's the, but, but, but wait a minute. I don't even need to ask no questions because it's like y'all seeing my paper do. and you talking and, and, and keep going now. But, but hey, Fonz, listen. Hey, Fonz, listen. Hey, Fonz, listen, I know this ain't the end of the show, but listen, to all my young guys out there, my young brothers in Coastville, if you ain't fighting for nothing, you're broke. If you ain't got nothing to love, you're broke. It's not all about the money. I want to be very clear because everybody, you know, I got a lot of people that say they come up to us because we have started so many different things and trying to figure, uh, figure out what we wanted to be and what our niche was. It's not about money, man, but yo, getting up in the morning and fighting for something, it, that means the world to me that I can fight for something. That I can, that we can create generational wealth, but not only that, but we can inspire every kid across the world. That kids that don't have their father, my dad did 13 years in prison. Fine, you hear me? Hey, hey you know I know. Hey, hey, so, hey, hey, fine. Let me chime in. Hey, hey, let me chime in real quick. Hit um, it down. Um, this is this is my thing right here. Um, it's time to shift the culture. I, listen, listen. I, you got a bell. You got a horn. You got a you got a bomb in the. Listen, Fonz, I said it's time to change and shift this culture. What do I mean by that? Let me tell you this. I have these conversations all the time. Oh, you know, you got to understand that my family, a lot of my family mates, whether it's my uncles or my, my pops, my cousins, been incarcerated. They've been in jail. We as a culture need to, all right, let me say this. We as a culture need to stop praising the guy behind the cell and start praising the people that's going to these visit rooms every weekend of their life that's holding this thing down. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Sure, sure. Fonz, listen to you, listen to me. My grandma, and I'm speaking from my own experience, my grandma, um, it hurt her more than it hurt my father in jail. Do you hear what I'm trying to, it hurt her more than it hurt him. Yeah. So when we used to go to these cells, listen, Fonz, I'm a, listen, I'm a visiting room baby. We yeah. come in the visiting room. Taking pictures in the visit room behind the, you know, the wall. Now things look a little different. But Fonz, listen to me. Hear me out. We used to sit yeah. with, with, with sweatpants on. We look, you know what I mean? Looking dingy dirt. My grandma got us up there to mine hoy in the mountains. And mm -hmm. we used to walk out of there, Fonz. Let me say it to you, Fonz. When we used to walk out of that jail cell, we always turned. Talk to him, Dom. Dom, talk to him. <laughs> Come on, man. Listen. We need to start as a culture. We have to shift this thing. We have to shift it. It's no, we can't praise the guy behind the cell no more. We have to praise the people that's going to these visiting rooms. That's waking up every day, these nine to five jobs. That's busting their, fine, excuse my language, but they busting their fucking asses for a living to help these guys, to help their sons and they, they nephews. It's time to shift the culture. So Fonz, let me say this to you, Fonz. Um, this is bigger than Drew. Obviously, this is bigger than Drew, as you can tell today. This is bigger than Drew, right? When when we my brother told you about this guy named Quincy Jones from Dallas, Texas, that we met, it was a it was a brother that looked just like us, right? Mm -hmm. He came outside of a store. I'm being more detailed, more succinct. So he came outside the store with bags in his hand from Neiman Markets. Mind you, we were broke. We were broke. So we were just, we was window shopping. We like, you know, let's just, you know, let's go to King Price. Let's just shoot around. We in our mom's car. Roman gave us a couple uh, dollars for gas. Um, we saw this guy walk out with a suit on with bags in his hand. And I'm like, man, he can't be tall enough. He ain't no NBA. He, he, he wasn't tall enough. Couldn't have been an NBA player. Wasn't big enough. He wasn't a football player. I'm like, hold on. So we walked up to him. I said, man, what do you do? I need to, and he had a Panama at the time. This is 2010. 
He was driving a Panamera Porsche at the time. Mind you, I didn't know what that was. All I saw in the back of the tag, it said, no job, I'm a millionaire. I was already intrigued. So if this dude sold cans on the corner, I was going to sell cans on the corner. That's where I was hungry for success. I was hungry to make a change. But listen, what I'm getting at is Quincy Jones, if I never talk to this man again in my life, he changed my life and my brother's life forever. I saw someone that looked just like me that did not play basketball. He did not play football. He wasn't an entertainer. He was an entrepreneur. So when kids grow up, when they see the twins, when kids get to grow up, so we're going to push this thing high as we can. It ain't no limit right now. There's no limit for us. And when young brothers and for kids all over, whatever culture, but especially our culture, when they see the twins, okay, I can be, I can be in the tech world. I can go get, I, I, I can build my own app. I can build my, the next iPhone. Things are going to shift, but we have to shift it. Let's praise the right things. Let's praise the right things. Good stuff. Hey, look now, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replay this, this tape because right now you are touching people right right now. So I'm going to acknowledge some of the viewers. And uh, <laughs> there's so much they're saying. Uh, okay, Iris, Iris said, you kings are winning. Trust God. Delina once again said, talk about it. So evidently you said something that rang a bell. There's a couple of things that rang a bell with me while you were talking. I want to get into that. Iris Holmes said, purpose driven. That's what you was talking about, Phil, waking up in the morning. Because let, let me tell you something. Brother Fonz came to Coatesville. Everybody knows my story. I was homeless for about six, seven months. Had the same clothes on when I got to, the, to Coatesville and the VA hospital, stayed in the homeless joint. And having a purpose, when you, when you wake up with a purpose, money finds a way to come to your purpose. Mm. If you love what you're doing and you're committed mm. to what you're doing, mm. money going to eventually find its way to you. I mean, as long as you don't quit. But if you're doing what you love and you do it constantly with consistency, money isn't going to be your biggest problem. And there's something else, man, something else you said that really just struck a bell. You said you started a platform and had no idea what the heck a platform is. Mm -hmm. A lot of us people, a lot of us won't start something because they don't see the whole staircase. So they won't take the mm -hmm. first step. Like you said, this is our biggest problem is starting. Mm. If they if, if it ain't if it ain't all mapped out to them, they ain't gonna start. Man, you got listen, to start. Go ahead, talk to them. Listen, Fonz, I don't want to cut you off. No, go ahead. The Fonz, the marching is cool. The marching, the things that we're doing to push legislation is cool. It's fine. That's great. I'm with it. I've done it. I've been out, I've been out there. I've been out. I beat my horn. I'm out there. I'm walking. We did the march. We did that. Now, Fonz, hear me out. Follow me. I need my followers. Follow me. Zoom in. Give me. Give me a second. I need your attention. Now, what are you doing with your contribution? What's mm. your contribution? Mm. See, back, if I can talk to each kid and every kid I walk past, what are you doing more than just rapping? Mm. What are you doing more than just basketball, football? I got to trigger somebody's mind, fines. So now, the order for us to be able to move forward and shift the culture and not just, just and, and also legislation, we got to become what we, what we, what we just, we, we, we got to become, and I tell people this all the time, we got to become what we, what we, what we, what we think we hate. We got to tell mm -hmm. our kids to become cops. We got to tell our kids to become judges. We got to tell our kids if you don't like your nine to five, if you don't feel like you're getting your shot, own it. It's people that's getting out of jail, man. Shout out to the people that's getting out of jail like David Phillips, started his own painting business, got a felony on his record. He started his own painting business. We, we got to really start thinking about our contribution to society. Because once we get done marching and we go home, what are you doing next? Mm. That's the problem. We don't know what we're doing next. But I tell you what I do. I know what I'm waking up in the morning doing. I know who I'm talking to in the morning. I know mm. who I'm inspiring in the morning. Who are you inspiring? That's the highest mm -hmm. hang of life. Who are you inspiring? See, people see, see, when I when I look at Donald Trump, I look at a guy that's making that made billions of dollars but uses his platform to speak whatever he feels. Like I like Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was a boxer. But he he uses his platform to speak what he feel. I want to be able to get to a point and use my platform, not just for me, but to speak about things that I feel like is unjust. So succeeding in life doesn't just help me. I get to shift the narrative. I get to say something. I get to speak up. I have a voice. I have a platform. So mm -hmm. my thing is, I mean, if y'all don't get nothing out of this tonight, don't. I ain't worrying about Drew. I ain't worrying about the businesses. I ain't worrying about me. I'm telling you, what's your contribution to shift the culture? What's your contribution? Who are you inspiring? 
what are you what's your contribution? Is it just you just coming home and hoping everything changed? You putting up you you put posting something on Facebook. What's your contribution in society? Somebody talk to me. <laughs> Woo. Huh? Hey, all right. Huh? Now, no, now, now we still got I gotta pay, I gotta pay my viewers. I gotta give them some respect here because talk to him. all right. Anthony Hogarth, you know, he just checked in. So did Ali. Wait, 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 wait. Don't wait, you wait, go wait. nowhere. Don't, right. you go don't, nowhere. don't you go nowhere. Listen, don't you go nowhere. Listen, don't you go Hey, fine, don't you go nowhere. Anthony Hogarth played a huge role in my life. John Hamilton, big shout out to B Doug, the Rip City Boys. John, listen, yo, man, listen. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. Listen, 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 listen. Um, Anthony, oh, let me tell you something, man. Um, this is no, this is no lie, man. Um, you know, and I'm trying to be, you know, as humble as possible, man. That guy, special guy, man. Like, you know, I remember a time where me and my brother literally was mad at him. I forgot why we was mad at him. We was playing basketball. He was teaching us life through basketball. And I didn't even, I couldn't, as a man, I see it now as a man. And I remember a long time ago, I remember we was like mad at him. We, we started cussing. Mind you, we, I don't know if he remembered this, but we was like kind of like cussing at him and, you know, he might not remember, he might. And I remember we were just, and I remember he kept shooting the ball, kept shooting the ball while we was talking trash to him. And I'm like, he would have beat, but I'm like, as a man, he saw that two, two young guys, two young kings was growing up without a father figure. And he understood, he could have chastised us. He was like, almost like, it, it, it was like our uncle. And so I, I'm so grateful that we met, you know, Ann Hogarth, John Hamilton, these guys was major roles, and please give it. Let's rest in peace to Mark. He was definitely he was my old head. You know, Scappin was more so the uncle figure, but like my old head was like kind of like Mark, and the uncles of it was like John Hamilton and, and Ann Hogarth. So we got to salute the Ann Hogarth. We got to salute to the king. That's, and let me, I just said this. This is what I just said. This is fine. I said we got to salute the people, and we got to give praise to the people that's waking up every day at these jobs. Am Hogar is a man of integrity, dignity, that he, every day this man goes to work, working at Lucan Steel for years, and now look where his son's at today, off of hard work. We have to start saluting these people and praising these people. The reason why, because kids grow up and they see what you're praising. And they praise a guy like that, like, okay, I, I'm a great father. I do the same thing Am does. I, when we was younger, and he used to say things about AJ, oh, he, I do the same thing with my son now. I saw, I had an example. So when you praise people, praise the right people. So mm. when your kids see, they can be like, you know what? This is what it should be. This is what it should look like right here. You know what I mean? So go. salute the Ampho Guard, man. Hey, I got to give a shout out to my daughter, Anika Smith. She is hanging in there with, with her pops. Anika, it's good to see you. Uh, wait a minute. Delina wants to know, how can she buy stock in Drew? Do you guys sell stock? She wants to not let, let, let me let me answer that. Uh yeah. we, right now we, we still on our seed round. Uh we got a lot more rounds to go. Uh but yeah. um we'll, eventually we will be going public in the next uh the next eight to ten years we'll be going maybe earlier than that, maybe the six maybe six to ten years we'll be going public. But right now we're gonna build our valuation up. So I mean the goal right now with Droop is to build our valuation through uh investment, but it's a possibility and um and um Delaney is such a such a warrior, such a queen, and uh, putting so much work, you know, it's definitely a conversation we can definitely have off the Richter. But uh, Delaney, <laughs> best, believe, best, be, best believe it. I know Delaney. Listen, I know Delaney got it. You hear me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Okay, now we got Marza Lackey. Lackey, she's jumped in. Johnny's Griffey, she's on the set. Terrence Stiletto Queen right is here. Uh, Anthony Hogarth said, I remember my dudes. <laughs> Anthony Hogarth, he's, he's, he's a real special brother. Took yeah. me under his wing when I came to Coatesville, too. Man, yeah. like almost like I was born and raised here. Okay, now let me see what else I got here. All right, man, but you know what? Y'all, what y'all talking, man, y'all just be killing my questions. I hey, Franz, Franz. I love it. Franz. What? I didn't know, I didn't know you was, I, I didn't know you wasn't from Grill. Man, I'm from South Philadelphia. I came here, man, homeless. Man, I shot drugs for 20 years. Mm, well, I, I never knew that. See, this is a this is a, a fun fact for me. I, I think you you understand when I was coming out, I was a baby going to your yeah. school. Yeah, and let me tell you how good God is. God made God hooked up nine banks to lend me one hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. A man who never owned a debit card at that time. Wow. 
Mm. When I came to Coatesville, 1993, five years away from being homeless. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's what God can do when you put your nose to the grindstone. Beautiful. Well, Beautiful. his grace and mercy, he just gave that to me. But I, but I got up every day and opened up my little store, worked part-time up at the VA, 15 hours a week. And I figured I could do more than what I, you know, I had done. So that's, that's what happened. That's how the sneaker franchise came about. Oh, okay. That's All right. dope. Huh. All right, here we go. Where we at? Okay. Okay, we already there. Now what better now now tell me about the benefits of, of your platform. Can you tell me like some of the inner workings of what does a person do? How do they get in touch with you? Okay, I got some t-shirts I want to sell. What would I do? Well, let me let me let me touch you on that. Uh our platform is uh we built it for networking, but it took a life of its own where now we see more biz local business to business buying from each other and mm -hmm. buying bulk. Like if a girl sell lipstick, she's buying bulk for that. She's starting her own business. So Droop is not just a platform where you're just selling, you're selling, but you're networking, you're collaborating. And we inspire all every entrepreneur on our uh, platform to go out to the real world and, and, and the collaboration they do on the application go outside of that and really get to meet that person. So the benefits is that we closed that, that we didn't close, but on our platform, there are so many deals that have been closed through our platform. I mean, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars being flown through our platform by just, you know, just networking entrepreneurs. I mean, I'm talking about real local businesses that's making over well over six figures are networking and building a real organization through our platform. So they're doing, it's a lot of collaboration. So the Drew app inspires you to, not just be online, but take it offline. So what you get from Droop, we want you to take it offline and really go meet that person. My mom, my mom, like we didn't, I, we got a, uh, we got chef that I, we had private chef that came over that I personally booked through our through our application. Uh, it just it, it, it's been a real blessing for entrepreneurs for B B to B business to business networking and marketing and collaborating with each other. So so many benefits, just not just selling a T-shirt. People are building real careers, real entrepreneurial careers off of Droop. And we haven't even hit a, a place. We haven't even hit a, a stage where we put all the perks in, like the uh, the payment system and and, and other things mm. that we want to do. So, um, I mean, and, go ahead, Don. And, and, and Franz, to, to be real quick, you touched on a lot of things. And I think one of the biggest perks about Droop is uh, there's no social media clutter. And what I mean by that is, you know, world news, trendy topics. When, you know, when Kanye West says something, you know, the world goes crazy, it stops. Everybody stop breathing. What, what did he just say? So, you know, and as a brand, if I'm a brand that's, you know, that's putting all my dollars inside of a product, whether it's a t-shirt line, whether it's makeup, whether it's cos whatever cosmetics, whatever, whatever your, your passion is, and you're trying to get paid off of it, you have kids, you're trying to build a network, you're trying to build income for your family. So Kanye says something crazy on social media. Now the world stops and everything that you worked hard for goes out the window. It's a distraction. So we wanted to build a platform where there wasn't no social media distractions. I don't care who you're dating when I'm building my business. I don't care what you're eating at a restaurant when I'm building my business, trying to feed my family. So that's what separates us from, you know, a lot of uh, platforms that, we're we're steering away from social clutter. So when you get on Droop, it's about you know networking, uh, customers shopping online without being distracted. Because I might be a customer that's online, right? I might be a customer that's online and say, "Hey, I want to buy X, Y, and Z." I just forgot about it. I just seen thirteen year old kids just fighting over nothing. Social media distraction. So that's one of our biggest perks. I feel like is the problem is you know steering away from social media clutter. And building a platform where people can just get on and not have that 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 mental distraction, that visual distraction. Okay, right. I got a viewer who has a question. Now, this gentleman here, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to try his barbecue sauce, but his name is Cash Roland, and he has what's called Big Boys Barbecue Sauce. It's in about 60, 70 stores, a giant uh, Walmart and all that stuff. And he lives right there in Thorndale and... Uh, I always push this product because the product is good. His question is, do you guys have a tutorial to help us older guys who aren't tech savvy understand everything your app offers? Fonz, great. We got some good, good barbecue sauce too, man. I'm telling you. Go ahead. 
Fine, that's a good question. As, you know what? As of now, we we just got in uh, contact. We didn't want to just hire somebody, uh, a video guy. On uh, a, we didn't want to just pay a video person. We actually wanted to build build a relationship up with somebody that's going to really capture the moment and really use our platform. So we got a guy now that not only will just shoot that will shoot our commercials and our videos, but actually understand our platform. And that's the biggest thing with us is understanding what we're doing and where we want to go and what's our vision. But the tutorial is definitely coming in the next month or two. Uh, we're working on that now and uh, definitely for the older and definitely because it's just a new platform that everybody that, that, that they don't know how to use it. And that's what's special about it. That it's new, it's fresh. And uh, a tutorial is definitely coming. We're working on that as of now. Uh, we get a lot of that through our emails, and uh, that's definitely coming. It's one of the biggest problems that we're having is people saying, hey, we need a tutorial. We usually go out our way and show people, but everybody, we can't mm -hmm. get to. We're building significantly in California, in North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, it's crazy. So we can't get to everybody. So our, our, our so we we definitely want to get uh, to the tutorials. And it's, yeah, it's yeah. Money too. So how does a person get in touch with y'all if they want to utilize your services? Um, you can always, you know, reach out to Dominic Hickman everywhere I'm at, whether it's Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, even on Droop, um, Dominic Hickman. Uh, my email is dominichicklin at yahoo.com. But you can always reach me on social services. If you have Droop, my name is Dominic Hickman on there. You can always reach out to me. I'm always available when it comes to my platform, our platform, our platform, sorry, um, always available. So you can always touch base with us. Um, I show you the ins and outs. I do it with everybody. I I introduced about four or 5,000 people uh, that joined Droop, how to work Droop system. So right now I can kind of handle it. I can kind of manage it right now, but uh, a tutorial video is definitely coming, but you can always reach out to me on my socials or even on Droop if you have it. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you, okay, now you guys have, have been are on this journey of entrepreneurship and things of this nature. What have, what have you found to be some of your, your bigger obstacles that you've had to overcome? Some of your challenges? Let me say something to you. Let me go, go ahead, let me go, let me, go, let me say something. It, one of our biggest, one of our biggest issues that we have that, I'm gonna just say some, some, some stuff about me and him. It's me and him. If you know anything about my brother, Dominic Hicklin, Fonz, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you catch the call the game, but the guy's a gunner. And, he used to, and, 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 and even even transferring over to business, uh -huh. Fonz, when, I, when I have an ideal and he got an ideal, we kind of argue and fight. And this is real, listen, this is entrepreneurship that we we argue, we fight. I, I He tell his girl, oh, my, do, 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 do. I tell my mom, do, do, he don't do, do, do. So, you know, the biggest thing is in entrepreneurship is finding the right partner. People, listen, if you're going to build mm. any with any significance, mm. find the right partner. Somebody you can collaborate with. You don't need a yes man. Oh, that's just nice. Man, him, yo, Dominic came up with so many dumb ideals that I was like, <laughs> no, way, no way we're doing that. No, we, we couldn't possibly do that. So building something with any significance in life Come on, yo, find the right partner. You can't go in business with anybody and everybody. Find the right business partner. I've been playing basketball and growing up with my brother my whole life. Even when I was in college not playing with my brother anymore, I lost the love of basketball because I wasn't playing with my brother. He's a gunner, and, he, and he's a gunner. He don't pass the ball. But I still had that love. So we've done everything together. So, so for me, find the right person you can collaborate with that you can build with. If somebody's not pushing a ticket like you are, that's a big issue. You don't want to be doing more than one person and that person's not doing. It, it, it just, that, it's just, it, business becomes out of whack. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a relationship. I'm married to my brother. <laughs> even, even when we just brothers and we just go to Donny Park with the kids and the wives and stuff like that, it, it's, it, it's a marriage. It's a real marriage and, and, and you really got to have a real good balance. Find the right partner. If not, you're in trouble. Good stuff. Hey, <laughs> Malcolm Robinson checked in. Puerto Rico, it's good to see you. Sandra Melvin, I think Sandra's down south somewhere. Thank you for checking in. Boy, y'all y'all two are, are really the best. This, 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 is, this is really good stuff. Okay, now, let's talk about that pineapple. What's up with it? Um, The pineapple, uh, that was my brother's dumb idea. No, nah, I'm joking. Uh, so listen, um, Fonz. <laughs> the pineapple uh, it stood for something. It was bigger than just the pineapple. Um, 
it's still for something. Welcome, hospitality, and friendship. And that's what my, that's what me and my, my my twin, that's what we embody. It's friendship. And you know, we're bigger than just but we talk about everything, arguing or anybody that know the twins know we argue. If we don't do nothing good, we argue good. Um, <laughs> but the pineapple means welcome, hospitality, and friendship, and that's what me and my brother is built and, on. And, and a fonts, a fonts, and yeah. another thing, uh, just about the logo, the pineapple. You know, we wanted to build something with some type of significance. We could have easily just made a cart with just droop or made some acronyms with droop really meant, but we felt like that fruit was appropriate to what we were building in life, Hospi hospitality, friendship, welcome. It meant a lot to us. And we wanted to make, because we, we didn't know, and then we wanted you to ask that question also. What is the logo? Why is it that, why is it that this is, that logo did exactly that dumb ideal Dominic was just talking about. It did exactly what I needed to do. You asked me that question about why we chose the pineapple. That's mm -hmm. why we chose the pineapple. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, man. I'm telling you, you guys are rocking and rolling. Let me see what you haven't mentioned. Let me see. Now, I don't even know what, yeah, okay. You created a platform. Right. Who taught you how to do it? Where did you start? You know what I mean? Yeah, briefly. Fonz! Listen. Fonz, Fonz listen. Uh. Listen, we spent over $20,000, Fonz. Hear me out, Fonz, listen. <laughs> we spent over twenty thousand dollars trying to figure it out. I mean, we didn't understand coding, and this is why I said it's so important for my young brothers in the community that it's more than basketball. Because if you something happened to your foot or you don't get drafted, you can always own something. Yo, Fonz, we didn't understand what coding was. We didn't understand how to what UI work was. You, you, you know, when you grab your phone, you just think that it just it just magically works. This worked for you. Spent over twenty thousand dollars figuring it out. We lost twenty thousand. And again, for my entrepreneurs out there, and to this day, we didn't just lose twenty thousand dollars, Fonz. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Fonz, we lost thousands of dollars. Money out of but our Fonz. And, and, and Fonz, let me say this, Fonz. Um, losing money is the best way to learn because honestly. Without none of those mistakes, we without none of those mistakes is spending that money. And one of the biggest things I, I feel like is being frugal with any businessman or businessman that's out there, be frugal with your money. Please, when you got it, we like, all right, let's just spend it. We we spent twenty three hundred dollars just on a video that we did not use at all. The company completely changed. So be frugal with your money as you're building, but that money being lost taught us a lot of lessons today and it's right on time it's right on time for the knowledge that we need today so be frugal with your money find the right business partner and let me say this to you your business partner does not have to be your brother your cousin it does not i think i the guy to me my me personally i think because we're twins and we kind of got the same ideals and we kind of you know, coexist. You know, eh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I believe that you should have someone that work just as hard as you, just as hard. I think that's one of the biggest problems that entrepreneurs have. They find some, and I'm gonna tell you. No, matter of fact, I don't think that's the biggest. I think the biggest, the biggest thing for entrepreneurs is they think they can do it by themselves. They mm. think, okay, hey, listen, if you want to build a corner store business, go go build it. But if you want to build a million dollar, a billion dollar. You have to start connecting with some different folks that's out there. So, you know, build a business, but also you're going to learn. And before you learn about business, you better know who you are as a person first, mm. right? The mm. first step is knowing who you are. So listen, before mm -hmm. you know who you are, you better realize who you're not, right? Mm. right? So listen, mm. let me say this to you. Don't let nobody define who you are also, right? Because let me say this to you. You are who you practice. Mm. You are what you eat. You are who you practice to be. So if you want to be like that guy, that's so that's go right back again. That's, I'm all, listen, I told you I'm shifting the culture. Let's bring it back. So if you want to, if you see that guy that's on it, that guy that he's buying all the Jordans, he's buying all the sneakers, and he's buying this and that, and, and you know that he's doing some foul stuff, and you know he's doing some foul stuff, but you say, like, but you're practicing to be like that. So once again, know who you are, know who you're not, and mm. practice the right person. Let me say because something. You are who you practice. Let me say something. Let me piggyback on Don when he said what he said. 
Dom said, know who you are not. Mm. Know who you are not. Yo, Fonz, that's so key because guess what? My brother do things that I that I can't do. I can't do certain things that he, he some things he's just really good at, and some things he's really bad at. And I pick up for that. He picks up where I slack off at. So that's so key. My brother was a phenomenal scorer on the basketball floor. He, the guy could put up 30. He was unstoppable. I couldn't just put up 30. Fonz, I was a gritty basketball player. I played great defense. So even at that early age, I knew that my brother was good at something. It, it made us a perfect, it made us the dynamic duo. That he was a scorer and I was the guy that just messed with the score. But I got I was the guy that could throw that assist. I, I, I can bang that assist off with whoo, I could get I could get rid of that ball, Fonz. I was good at that. He wasn't good with that, Fonz. The dude don't have night vision at all. We just wasn't born with night. I was <laughs> it's just something about me. I just I just had that vision. So anyway, just to touch on that. Know who you're oh, fine, fine. No, listen, know what you're not good at in your business. And that's another thing when choosing a partner. Know what they're good at and know what you're not good at. That's key. Mm -hmm. Find somebody smarter than you. Good stuff. Good stuff. Fonz, Fonz, before you, hey, Fonz, listen, I know you got a, I know you got some questions, but listen, we we want air today. We want air. We free. We free. So listen, <laughs> hey, Fonz, so my biggest thing is uh, I'm going off, I'm going way off topic, man. Um, greed. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things in this, uh, in this business world and, and in anything in life. I don't care what it is. Greed, right? So let me tell you this little quick story. We can kind of move on, but uh, it was this dog. I need y'all to catch this. Let's zoom in real fast. Let me take my hat off. Real fast. So it was this dog. Well, listen, it was this dog, right? He was walking over a bridge with a bone in his mouth, right? Follow this, follow this, follow it. He was walking over the bridge with a bone in his mouth. So the dog looked down. He saw another dog that was here with a bigger bone in his mouth, right? So the dog jumps down off the bridge into the water to grab the bigger bone, right? So the dog grabbed the bigger bone, but he quickly realized that that bigger bone was nothing but a reflection in the water. So it mm. ended up with nothing. Mm. Fine, I need you to check. Fine, fine, fine. Bring that back. Fine, 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 fine. Hey, fine, 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 fine. Listen, he got to catch it. Hey, fine, listen, fine. The dog jumped in the water to grab the bigger bone, but the bigger bone was nothing but a reflection in the water. So he ended up with nothing. Mm -hmm. Greed. Yeah. Find, listen, let, let me say something to you. We live in a greedy, a dog eat dog world. And to find, listen, excuse my language. No, no, don't say it. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'm gonna be a good, okay. so listen. But in this world that we live in, a dog eat dog world, I know businesses, I know, you know, finding a hard worker is cool. Like I said, it's cool and finding the right, but you got to find someone that's genuine first. You know, he, that person might be beautiful on the outside. Everything is beautiful. The shell is beautiful. Everything is beautiful, but the internal is ugly. And whatever's in the internal is going to show on the shell of that person. Find someone genuine. Now, fine, talk to me. What's next? Well, we're going to say good evening to Nelly Talton. Nelly, it is good to see you. And uh, you're getting so many, you know what? This is this is, is being highly viewed now. I really appreciate it. Now, we're coming down to almost time to close because I got to go eat because I haven't eaten yet. I don't never eat before these shows. I want to give it my best. Okay. So now, where do you see your company in five to 10 years? Good question. Do I answer I see it. I, 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 where we're going now, we got we got plenty of investors that's that's uh, geeked up about us. Our, our our company's been growing rapidly, steady pace. Sometimes it's growing steady, and sometimes it's just. I mean, we see numbers through the roof, and it's growing. Our active users is growing. The business is growing. Uh, we like what we're saying. Um, I, I, I see I see Drew uh, in the next five years, maybe FZ round. Closing a closing around for almost close to 100 million dollars in investment uh, valuation valuation extremely high, maybe 100 to 200 employees. Um, and I see us connecting businesses across the world. I see us changing the narrative for for local businesses, not just we you know not just we're just going to jump on these social media companies and and just and put thousands of dollars into these products and just hope that we gain customers. I believe that we will be the way. We will be the way. We will be the home for local business. And we want to connect. And we hope 
that people can create gener generational wealth through our platform. That's our goal. That's what we talk about. We want to be able to compete with some of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world. Right now, we're right now we're showing we're showing headway and we're showing that we could become we could become great. But five years from now, I see us being I see us over with two hundred something employees, and uh, the, the the way we're going now and, and and the companies that we're talking to and for um, investment for our valuation build up, I see us being uh, re ready to ready to go public, ready to go public in maybe the next five to eight five to five to eight five to ten years. I see. It. And right Fonz, on. let me say this, Fonz. Fonz, yeah, Fonz yeah. Um, for all the new users, download Droop. Download. This is what we're talking. We're talking about our app also. So download Droop. It's only for iPhone right now. And as we speak, um, we're waiting. And I, I, I get this question a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask the question. I get this question a lot. And I'm gonna answer. When are you opening up for Android? Um, it's just like anything else in life. When you open a store from Fonz, when you open your, your sneaker store. You wanted one sneaker store to be successful first, and then you open another one. So that's the same thing. Uh, what we're going, what's going on at Drupal? We want to become successful in the iOS, which is iPhone users, iPads, mm -hmm. anything with Apple product. You want to be successful in it. Once we get to where we want to be, comfortably, mm -hmm. then we're going to open up Android. But Android is so close, and it's closer than we than we thought it was. So download Drupal. It's only for iPhones right now. Android, we're coming soon, but go. And real fast before I pass it off to Fonz, we have 21,000 experience released on our platform. We're growing like wildfire. If you're looking to, for photographers, for chefs, for people with lip gloss lines, hair product, beauty products, it's on Drew. Everything, 21,000 and counting experience is growing by the minute. And when, you say, when, he said, and when he said, when he said the experiences, he means products, products, items, things that you can services. buy. Services. Services. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I know a lot of y'all saying, man, does this have to really, really end? Because this is so like different, but it really does. So now I have a question for both of y'all. Then the time is yours. But at the end of every segment, I always ask my guests to share any insights or advice to the viewers out there that will either provide them with education, information, or inspiration. Those are the three, those are my three pillars right there. If you can hit one of them, who would like to go okay. first? I'll go first. Um, one of the main things that uh, I think that we missed out today is uh, the haters. We gotta say hi to y'all today. Um, it's gonna be a lot of people that's out there that's gonna you know, ain't gonna believe in you. Some of them was family mates. I'm telling you, sometimes water is thicker than, you know. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have a lot of naysayers out there, the haters, they're gonna talk about you. That's what they do. That's, I, I, I strongly believe that that was one of our biggest obstacles, you know, getting over people's opinions, what they thought about us, you know, not even just business-wise, just period. You know, the haters are gonna talk, but that's fine. Cause when the haters talk, they're explaining your story. There might be, Listen, they might say something to the right person, right person, and that right and that right person might say, "Oh, well, let me go check them out myself." So let the people talk, let them hate. This is what they do. I had to touch on this, Fonz. Um, we get a lot of it. I don't like it, but at the same time, they're part of our marketing team. They help us expand. They help us get more exposure. Let them talk. They're all, listen. Whether you do something they want you to do or you do what you want to do, they going man, he still ain't this, he ain't that, or he used to be this, or he got, he think he, that come with this territory. Because nobody talks about the guy that's on the sidewalk, sleeping down. Nobody talks about the guy that's doing nothing. They only talk about guys that's doing something. So listen, entrepreneurs, not even just entrepreneurs, great workers that's out there that have been working your job 20, 30 plus years, you reached a level of success, you did, and they talking, that's fine. Let them talk because if they're not talking, that means you ain't working. You ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I want to say hi to the haters today. For all my haters and for all everybody, I'm saying this for all everybody's haters. Listen, let them be a part of your marketing team. Let them promote whatever you're doing, whether it's your lifestyle, whether it's your business, or whether they talk about your kids, which is crazy to me. But let them talk. It's part of the game. Keep doing what you're doing. I love y'all. My name is Dominic Hicklin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Drew. It's been a blessing tonight to talk to Fonz. Coach Bill, stand up. Before I go, I'm gonna have to, uh, I got to get my shout outs again. Adrian Roberts, uh, Victor Ford Jr., 
as Mar Rokins, uh, Francis Green, Francis Warston, Jesse Zeller, uh, Jerron Wilson. I, I miss you. I still love you. Uh, my mom, I love you. My dad. We go through hardships. I love my dad. Forgiveness is one of the biggest things. I'm at peace right now. Um, oh <laughs> man, who am I missing? Anthony Hogarth. Everybody that was John Hamilton. Everybody that was a part of our, our, our upbringing. I love y'all. Um, thank y'all. And everybody that downloaded Droop. If you support it, I, yeah, I know the ones that didn't, you know, download Droop, which is cool. We, we almost, you know, it's fine. But keep building. Keep loving each other. Let's keep shipping this culture. I love y'all. Give it to me, Phil. Come on, bring it on home. <laughs> Let me give a shout out to, uh, I want to shout out my mom, uh, Shona Hicklin. Uh, more importantly, I want to shout out uh, Phyllis Holmes. Oh my God, Phyllis Holmes, my baby, my grandma. Oh man. See, if anybody know my grandma Phyllis Holmes, she was different. And she taught us to be different and think with a free mind. And when you guys are going on your journey, whether it's your career or whatever the case may be, man, don't you ain't got to sit in the traffic jam. You ain't got to do 99% of nine of what every American is doing in the world. Go a different route. Go a different way. If you see everybody going that way, you go another way. But um, I, I want to say something to people, man. Um, We got to change the narrative. We got to start praising our young thinkers, too, also. You know, we praise our young athletes, our entertainers. But if we really want to shift it, we got to start praising the guy that the kid with a 4.0 that's that's coding that's an engineer mm -hmm. the, the engineering mechanics the you know the, the the entrepreneur the leader the speaker the spelling bees if we really want to make a real progress we got to start praising the kid that want to be a cop you can't keep calling him a snitch because be, because you got to realize if you want somebody in your community that understands you you need us to be in there so you can't you can't just keep we got to listen we have to start praising other things than just entertaining sports we got to do other things we got to start praising other things that's how we're going to change the narrative what's your contribution because i know a lot of y'all i see a lot of y'all marching doing y'all thing and that's great but what are you contributing and i know what i'm contributing every kid i see i'm like the fire fonts they gotta get this work any kid i see what do what, what you doing right now why you on this block? Why you on this street? Any kid that I come across, what you doing? Oh, you play basketball? What else is you doing? So that's my goal is to change the narrative. I want to change the narrative. Yeah. And uh, let me let, uh, let me say something. I'll be wrong if I didn't give a shout out to my uncle David. I'll uncle be wrong. David. Shout, oh, uncle David. Hi, shout out to my uncle David. Oh man, I love my uncle David. That's that's my favorite uncle. That's my favorite uncle. I'm not getting off this line. Uh, David Holmes. I love my uncle. One of the coolest dudes ever. We used to steal his pizza whenever he came from a, a, a hard day's work. We used to run outside. He used to chase his down. I love my uncle. He's part of our, our upbringing, and I thank him, too, also. Um, and fine. I thank you for, you know, putting us online. Um, it been, you know, it been a little bit, but we here. I know we took over the show, but this was – I had – listen, fine, we had to make a mark. <laughs> we had to. Fine, fine. Fine, 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 we had fine, to take fine, over fine, this fine, thing, Fonz. Fonz, you couldn't just take, take this thing fine. over. Fine. You couldn't just have us on here and ask us questions. You should have known we was going to take over the line. Man, look, come I knew on, what I was doing. I knew what I was doing when I asked y'all to come on, man, because this was the easiest. This was the easiest show I had because I ain't had to ask you nothing because you answered them all as you articulated yourself. Hey, fine. Listen, this was hey, fine. this was a sweetheart. Hey, but hey, fine. When you when you pat listen when you wake up when you wake up and that sometimes you don't gotta say nothing. Your passion to speak for you. The energy is speak for you. And that's all that's happening today. Passion is, it's the, listen, I'm gonna tell y'all this. Let me tell y'all this. When you wake up every day with a purpose, whether it's for your kids, whether it's for your business, whether it's for your significant other, life is a little different. You can't eat looking at somebody else's plate. Focus on your passion, please. Your mm -hmm. passion and your loved ones. Let's big, listen, let's big up our loved ones, the people that support us. Fox, I don't even wanna leave. Fine, you begged me to get on here. Now I don't want to go. I don't want to. But you got to get out of here because I got to eat dinner. So you're getting Group out of here. Up, but fine. ladies and gentlemen, look, this isn't the last time you're going to hear from these two because as they progress in their areas of expertise, we're going to have them back on. But I want to recognize a couple of more viewers before we go. Kaya Scott, who, who did a fantastic, we had a great interview last week, I believe it was, Kaya. 
You're really special. Dion, she's still hanging in there. Lisa Miller, Dennis Brown Jr., and Dominique Cortez has showed up on the scene. Look, ladies and gentlemen, look. This is Brother Fonz coming to you straight live from City Town Talk, man. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have these two brothers on our show tonight. They didn't cuss that much, so I don't. I didn't only have to bleep out one thing. That's not bad. I'm going to share this to all the groups because this was the realest. I, I think that's what the young folks say. They say this is the realest. Well, what you heard from these two brothers was unvarnished uh, truth, passion, feelings from the heart, things that they've learned, inspiring, motivating, educational, informational. And it's because of people like this, why this platform is here. Because we sometimes walk all over diamonds looking for coconuts. Mm. And these two brothers are diamonds. Stop reaching for coconuts. Stop mm. reaching for irrelevance. Stop mm. reaching for stuff that has no redeeming value whatsoever. And the whole time we're walking over coconuts. I mean, walking over diamonds. And before I go, diamonds start off as black coal and it is perfected and it becomes that priceless gem through time and pressure. So mm. don't look at a lump of coal and say it has no value. That's a diamond that's in the process of being made. So look, mm. with that being said, man, hey, look, I love y'all. Nobody told y'all that they love you out there. Brother Fonz loves y'all. You know the twins love y'all. You love just you heard too. them. You just heard them. And I want hey, you to stay tuned. Y'all talk to me. I want you to tell them to download Drew. I need that. I need you to say that. Download Drew. It's coming from hey, Fonz, not the twins. Okay, if y'all got iPhones, iPads, I, 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 download Drew and stop playing, man. Ain't nobody playing That's with y'all. And look, as you tell push them up, they're going to push us up because a rising tide lifts all boats. Hey, look, I want y'all to have a great night. Tune in next week for more from City Town Talk. This is Brother Fonz. Remember, Coatesville's rising and Black Lives Matter. Peace out. Get out of here. <laughs>